Anyway, here's Alan Davis again. Maybe that's all it was. Oh, these were color holds. Okay, this would have been like, for example, color blue on top of the black and the, the black artwork, the colored artwork. So it'd be kind of floating on the top of it. Okay. Yeah, incredible stuff. And I got to work on it. You kept sending it to me. You couldn't make them stop. So blah, 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 more and more. Here's Starlin again. This is a John Bersama. That's what he was putting out for Savage Sword. Oh, yeah. And then you'd get, you know, Alfredo or Disney, one of these guys. And so, yeah, that's all they need to work with. The gravity is there. You know, well-defined faces, well-defined figure work. You know, why bother doing tight pencils? Here's Frank. Here's Brunner. So would you do that? Or that's done by the artist? He did that. In fact, I saw this because uh, I was with Engelhard visiting his flat in Berkeley. And he had these, like, you know, just propped on chairs and tables all over the room, just kind of in a circle. And, like, two months later, that was my apartment. Because he and his wife decided they wanted a place that was bigger. And so, okay, okay, it's Frank again. And, yeah, so um, Rubenstein did this one. Yeah, that's, you know, that's enough for an anchor that knows the stuff. You don't have to tighten all the stuff up. Here's Brunner. Here's my exciting career. Starlin. Looks like the Avengers Annual. So Rubenstein inked this. So that's all Joe needs. Don't waste your time putting all the black areas and stuff. Uh, Miller. No, oh, probably Paul Smith. Yeah, um, there's Mastermind. And um, she's just jilted Logan at the altar. So all this original art came yeah. Miller. into your house and you... Yeah, sent it back. Here's Arthur. <laughs> Real early. Rather early. Long, Long shot. shot. Mm -hmm. Five. Yeah, he was maybe 22 years old. You know, give me a break. What hope is there for the rest of us? Okay, Paul. No, that that's Miller. Huh, yeah. Miller, definitely Miller. So now, can you go back to that one there, Tom? So you would put the title in here then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the credits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, next man annual. annual. So that's Arthur. And Arthur. He likes to um, do fiddly bits with the titles on every page. So Alan Davis and um, Dan Green. A little crisper in the inks. Um, what the heck is this? This is Mark Silvestri. So give this to an anchor. Thanks a lot, buddy. Dan Green did very good work with this, though. Because there's enough there if you're a competent illustrator as an anchor. Okay, for some reason, they sent me the smaller versions, probably because it was cheaper. Smaller paper. Um, also, Silvestri. Rather tight. Yeah, Silvestri. Yeah, really good with faces. Really good. He's a very good artist for X-Men. So I was less involved with this page. And Sylvester, Sylvester, and Sylvester. And Chris stacking in the dialogue. <laughs> yeah, okay, Chris, big boy, I'll make it fit. Don't worry Chris about it. Claremont did a lot of dialogue. Yeah. Okay, so um, Alan Davis again. Excalibur. Um, yes, 16.
Yeah, it's still that one day with pencils now. So tight. That whole kind of Princess of Mars thing. Chris always saw Nightcrawler as a swashbuckler, which is how Cockrum saw him. Kind of living fantasy life. Because why not? Mm -hmm. He's going to other planets anyway. That's Kitty Pride. Tell it again, Alan. Got a lot of that. Yeah, huh? Wow, those are really. Yeah, I was just tossing these things out for the longest time. Well, wow, I could save them. Of course, can't save everything. He's, your, he's Arthur. Paul Smith. Here's Chris covering everything up. Um, Arthur. Arthur, good lord, you know? What do these guys think of? <laughs> what, you know, what's wrong with their brains? They, just, <laughs> they hold nothing back. Cynthia Martin, who drew Star Wars about the final three or four years. And she was contemplating Catholicism. So and who, I forget who, did the, who did the lettering here? And then you would go over and put it up. I believe that would be her script. I don't know for certain. But, you know, just such beautiful work. Such, you know, an amazing perspective shot for the crucifixion thing there. Crucifixion thing. But, you know, great hands. She was just so in touch with the naturalness that can be in comics. Her Star Wars stuff was not that well received. X-Men 268. So Jim Lee. Wow. Those are some incredible pencils, aren't they? Oh, it's my yeah, my favorite thing is this character Jubilee. This is Jim's doing because you know she's she's like 13, 14. And here's this overly buxom, uh, what's her name, Psylocke, and she's looking over, you know, looking at her body over, looking down her own front of her own shirt, and just eh. <laughs> there's no hope. Black Widow, yeah, this is uh, yeah, 160th one that the Captain America Wolverine and the Black Widow on the cover. And I guess we're back in. In time or something. Ah, great Captain America. Good lord. Okay. For some reason, I made copies of Mobius. Who wouldn't? Yeah. <laughs> um, Arthur. Which is him, actually. And there's Chris. Where are you? Uh, not on this page. Oh. So you've been, what comics have you been in? Uh, not many. Here and there. There was an X-Men annual I showed up for one panel. Yeah, Arthur. All these great reaction shots and all. Yeah, it's wonderful when they can put things in the three dimensions. It's really heavily forced perspectives. That's why it's hard to explain to the young guys. It's putting a lot of thought into the backgrounds. What is the stage setting? Where are they in physical space? So here's Arthur. Oh. The new mutant special. Again, I have a lot of these. Maybe he ain't fit now. I don't know the audio to me if that's Arthur's pencil inks or Terry's. I don't know. Same page. There's Arthur. I guess this was just drawn on one of the backs, one of the pages. Uh -huh. Little bonus drawing. Yep, yep. Just warm up. Yeah, so great shots of Hella. 
I really like her headdress. It's so crazy. I don't know how functional and practical it would be. And oh, it's it's madness. You can't walk through a door. <laughs> You know, it's like Thor's old helmet. It was just drunk. The, the wings were a foot higher than his head, and he's seven feet tall. Is this? Okay, yeah, this is the same page, just right. nice much stuff. better exposure. Incredible long shot. What do you do when you're facing the goddess of death? <laughs> you know, it sucks all the breath out of you. And I imagine she would, actually. Just by being close to her, you'd, you'd die a little bit. So, Arthur, he really liked his skinny, tall people. His legs are like half again as long as they should be. Uh-oh. What am I looking at here? I'm not sure. Nothing written on it. This is for Kamiko. This is, you know, manga stuff. I don't even know what the name of this series is. I don't know why I have this. Okay, that's kind of stuff Lois was doing when we met. Flyers for um, convention parties and stuff. Again, science fiction convention stuff. And another one. Con 1983. Yep, back when things were good. Yeah, well, that's interesting stuff. You got a whole stack of it here, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See if there's any. Uh... Oh yeah. Here's Barry. Yeah, since. What his... is this from? Do you remember? It's an X-Men issue. I could look it up. I couldn't even begin to guess. A date for an issue on it, but it could be found out. Yeah, since Barry's earliest work of Marvel was on an issue of X Men, then a couple of three issues of Daredevil. Later on, when he was drawing like this, he made a point of going back to those series for at least covers. And here's Barry again. Um, couldn't tell you who inked it, maybe he did. Um, Michael Gilbert is inked by Craig Russell. Elbrick. Look at that stick. Coming by George nice. Perry. Yeah, okay, so Michael T once again. Yeah, quite amazing. They were a very good team, a very good pair. Okay, here's your George Perez. And inked already by Terry. Wow. I mean, there's the man's letters. But you did this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of as a counterpoint to the usual Marvel style. I figured, okay, let's do something that looks completely different from Marvel and do it consistently because this is a different book than a Marvel book, which is a really stupid thing, but that's how I felt about it. <laughs> it doesn't cross over to Marvel. So it's, okay, here's, here's Burn. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, see, it was, you know, clearly developed. Mm -hmm. Entire philosophy, entire um, alphabet. So, when you did the the guidelines, mm -hmm. okay, would you erase those, or would you oh, no. have the anchor do it? No, I mean, if I erase them, you'd lose background. Not so much on this page, but in general, why would I diminish the background information or the character anatomy information? Oh, for the anchor then. So the yeah. anchors. There's so a the anchor. Get as much information. I remember yeah. that issue. Okay, here's Burn again. There's Starlin. Wow. Brunner. Frank Robbins. Oh, yeah. Oh, I sure liked working on him. There's so much energy. It was crazy stuff. But there's gravity to these characters, the lighting all works. And, you know, this is the 40s anyway, so yeah. things are more flamboyant. Yeah, this incredible Namor. Uh, Barry. Yeah.
Yeah, this is the kind of stuff you kind of resent having to put lettering on because <laughs> it was on the pencils. Right. It wasn't on an overlay and then, you know, not imbuing the artwork with it itself. It was, this was the stuff. What a complicated thing that is. How nice. I don't know who this is. Probably Barry again. I think so. It's X Men. 186. Yeah, that's Barry. 186. It just suddenly a lot less graphite on the page. Yeah, same there. <coughs> We're almost done. Oh, we can go on all day from. Yeah, somewhere I've got the Gene Colon in the front. Uh, oh, the John Bissama stuff. I'll just put this on on our on our web page there. People get a kick yeah. out of this on our Facebook page. That's yeah. This was a double sized issue, and in fact, Barry only drew half of the plot and made it a double sized book. So the next issue, which was Vector Made a Junior, he drew the rest of the plot for a regular sized issue. Yeah, Barry just expanded and expanded because he wanted to do these tight faces and all. Syncopation. This wonder where the original art is now Ooh. hanging on whose wall? Complete inked. Terry may have it. some of the pages still. Barry may have the rest. I don't know if people just held on to things. Then when later in life when you're in ill health, but people still remember. Wow. Yeah. That had to take up a whole pencil right there. <laughs> I think so. I <laughs> he think sharpened so. that pencil right down to a... And this detail the, business, too. Yeah. It's got light and dark. It's not just slashes on the page. These, these tendrils actually had been... You know, he thought about them. He thought about the directions of all the hair flying around. Yeah. I don't know how people can think in such enormous complexity. Look at the complexity. detail the buildings. And... Mm hmm Mm-hmm. So this is the end of the berry. And then Paul Smith. The finale page no one expected to see. Because she died, you know, was killed three years earlier or something. But she's a force manifestation, and you can't mess with force manifestations. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, so made photocopies box. of some of the work that you did. That, yeah. It's nice to look back at that and see that.